Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Aeroscale, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Cracking the Box. Uh, this week we've got the Sop with Camel F1 uh, in 1 16th scale from Hasegawa. This is a bare bones uh, Sop with Camel. No, uh, basically, you, as you see it on the box, is, is what the finished model is going to look like. Um, this is the kit number MU01. It's a muse what they're calling a museum model. Um, on the front cover, we've got uh, power plant uh, information, armament, 7.7 .7 Vickram machine guns. The power plant was the uh, uh, Clerget uh, 9B rotary engine, and the manufacturer was Sopwith Aviation Company. And uh, gives information of uh, World War I British fighter, introduction June 1917. On the uh, side of the box is mostly just uh, information. They do have a, co a color photo here of the, the finished plane model as, as provided with in terms of what's internal. And on the back of the kit, there's all sorts of uh, cool color photography here, again, of the detail that you're going to get with this 1 16th scale kit. So lots of control wires and um, various things, obviously, to rig up in the, in the production of the, or in the making of the kit. Um, let's go ahead and crack her open, though, and take a look. It has this kind of a sleeve arrangement here. I'm going to pull the sleeve off. There we go. So right off, uh, we can see the manual, uh, which is a fairly... Uh, detail bit, 20 pages. Goes into, obviously, lots of detail. Sprue overlays. Uh, everything that's included with the kit. There's a brief history over here on the Sopwith Camel. Um, for those uh, not familiar with the history, let's go ahead and take a brief minute uh, to maybe, or a couple minutes to take a look at the uh, history of the Sopwith Camel. The Sopwith Camel was a British First World War single-seat biplane fighter introduced on the Western Front in 1917. Manufactured by Sopwith Aviation Company, it had a short coupled fuselage, heavy, powerful rotary engine, and concentrated fire from twin, synchronized machine guns. Though difficult to handle, to an experienced pilot it provided unmatched maneuverability. A superlative fighter, the Camel was credited with shooting down 1,294 enemy aircraft more than any other Allied fighter of the war. It also served as a ground attack aircraft, especially near the end of the conflict when it was outclassed in the air-to-air -air role by newer fighters. On August 10, 1918, Zeppelin L-53 was shot down, and on July 17 in the same year, L-54 and L-60 were destroyed on the ground. This was when the seven Camel 2F-1s armed with a pair of 23-kilogram bombs, attacked an airstrip base of Germany, flying from the aircraft carrier Furious. The reason why this fighter was nicknamed Camel was that the raised machine guns flaring on top of the nose looked like the hump of a camel. Of course, we also know another famous pilot who piloted the Sopwith Camel. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that little brief history and uh, some photos and so forth. So let's go ahead and keep going on here with the manual. And let's see, we've got more parts overlays. Pretty much everything's used on this kit, obviously. It's not uh, related to any other releases. Um, and uh, they go start with the engine assembly and the instructions. Moving on through to uh, the fuselage assembly, the control um, stick and guy. I'm not sure if this is all functional. Uh, would be interesting to know. I don't think it is looking at it. But um, maybe you could make it functional, and I don't know. It's uh, certainly large enough, maybe scale-wise, to do that. And uh, let's see. Goes through the wing construction. Lots of detail there in terms of the, uh, the ribbing and so forth. Um, most of these parts, just so you know, are, are made not to be painted. They're already colored and so forth. That's why the pictures look so interesting. It doesn't look like a painted aircraft, but literally just a, you know, put together. Um, so a lot like the older kits we kind of remember probably from our youth where you know you kind of put them all together and you didn't really have to do anything. So here's the first uh, uh, sprue uh, fret and you can see this is the engine detail parts and other metalized parts in the kit like the, the uh, I believe that's seat if I'm not, not correct, one of the seats and then uh, some of the front engine, um, uh, I don't think that's probably a contact point, right, for the internal cowl. Um, so here we have the decal sheet with French markings, obviously. 
I'm not sure why. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see. Correction. They have a correction sheet here for part of the uh, engine pieces going on. And then uh, we have a little, little uh, piece in, that's obviously in this box. Let's take a look. They're protecting. And these are the uh, some of the small bits, like the um, some of the rope materials, some of the fine uh, guy, um, control wires, or this I think believe like a thread. And there's the rubber for the tires, some additional copper strands, and then a I believe a rubber a piece of rubber there. Okay. By the way, there's going to be photography at the end of this showing the photos with. Uh, without the plastic obviously and so forth so you can get some better close-up pictures this is just the unboxing portion so here's some of the main fuselage um here's uh, a bag of quite a few items Let's see if i can you know, i've got uh, some various different colored pieces like this piece with the cross weaving and um i'm not sure what that piece is got some kind of a little small ribbing along the side like it's, it has teeth along the edges uh, and then we have a piece here with the propeller and some other uh, various uh, items. Uh, there's the dash with the uh, instrumentation. Looks like some uh, decals go probably in there. And then a piece of uh, the black sprue material with the engine, um, rotary engine, and uh, more, some, I think, believe some of the machine gun parts here. And next we have a lot of the ribbing for the wings and so forth. All this stuff looks very clean, you know, typical Hasegawa quality. Seems like some little small pushpin marks on some of these pieces, but otherwise they look pretty good. Uh, another bag uh, with quite a few pieces, some, some of the uh, clear plastic and such. The crystal, which is bagged in a separate bag, but you can see there. And here's the wheels, which again are a different color and some gray uh, rubber, I believe, or hard, very hard plastic or rubber. Uh, or excuse me, soft plastic or rubber. And these black pieces, I'll move these over here. Um, more small detailed bits, various connector pieces, I think, and um, some of the gun here, the, uh, let's see, I'll already look at that. And then finally, the last two, actually, there's a little bit more there, but um, there's uh, the actual uh, lower and upper wing, I think. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, these are more, well, part of the wings. But then they have um, some of the rear uh, uh, rudders and ailerons and things like that. So, um, and lastly is this, which I didn't realize was in here. There's some kind of uh, line drawings or something, I believe. All right, so we can see these are actual line drawings in one to one scale for one sixteenth that uh, include actual you know information about the the uh, the rubber thread versus the probably the copper thread and they're not showing any of those but so these are just the uh, the support wires and things like that inside the wings and. Uh, Again, they're showing rubber. Oh, there's the metal wire on this one. These are two-sided, actually, too. And then they have this colorized one, which is not to scale, but it does have all sorts of markings and decals, positions of decals, probably, and things like that. And then basically, again, kind of maybe almost like a, a wall poster quality if you want to put it up on your put it up in your shop or something. So very cool, very nice. Um, we are looking for somebody to. Um, you know, potentially work on this kit, so just an FYI before I move on to photos. And I believe that's everything, yep. All right, so let's uh, take a look at some photos, detailed photos, and then we'll come back.
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos, uh, in-detail photos of this kit. Uh, looks interesting. I know there are some uh, people out there who believe they can uh, cover the kit and create essentially like a canvas version or that there's stuff out there. I'm, I'm not an expert on soft with camels or over one planes, but I can tell you that uh, from what I've been told, that's a, a challenging project, uh, but it's not impossible, I'm sure. So um, we're going to be looking for somebody to obviously either build this up as is or build it up into something more if uh, if they opt to do to do that. But uh, but definitely if you're interested, give me a uh, email at publisher at kitmaker.net. If I haven't already promised it out, I will definitely take your name into consideration. If you have a project or an idea, let me know what that is also, obviously. So uh, if you have any comments or suggestions about this video, please leave them below. And remember, you can go on our, our YouTube page and also subscribe on YouTube if you want to get alerts to videos and things like that that we put up on the site. Um, again, our thanks to uh, uh, Hobbyco uh, Hasegawa USA for sending us this uh, sample kit. Uh, we're getting it a little later than some of the other sites, but hopefully uh, it's obviously a kit of some interest uh, to aircraft modelers. And I'm sure some of them would enjoy seeing it on our site as well as uh, what's already been out there on the net probably. So thanks and for watching and have a good day.